Uh, hello everyone, this is Alberto from the Bucker Lab and today I'm going to do a short video on how to use the command line uh, in Tasso. So I know a lot of people are a little afraid of it and I'm just going to show some of the very basics and how it actually is very useful and very powerful. So I'm going to start with a terminal. This is uh, what it looks like in Mac. You can type terminal and it will show up. Uh, otherwise uh, you can go into your applications and then in under other here is the terminal um, right so uh, the first thing we're going to do is just start with a basic uh, where, where which directory we're at so for that we'll use this command uh, which is print working directory and it tells you okay you're under your own user and one of the interesting things you can do with Tassel is that you can install it anywhere uh, as long as you have a, a internet connection. So let's go into the desktop, for instance. So we change directory to the desktop. And you can see that I have nothing there. At ls, it's print a list of things that are in that directory. So I currently have an empty desktop. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, Git. Git is a piece of software that you're going to need to download. And essentially what it does is that it allows you to have several people work on the same uh, project and contribute to code independently. And essentially you have one that has a version control. So it's very useful for software development and uh, among others, uh, you're welcome to go online and see more about what it does. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, type git clone and then we're going to put the uh, uh, online residence of the TASO file standalone code which is bitbucket.org slash TASO admin slash TASO dash five dash standalone dot git so we do that and what it's saying is that it's going to clone it into our current directory uh, it's creating this directory called TASO5 standalone. Uh, it's going to take all the things that are online. Uh, this process will take a different amount of time depending on your internet speed. And we're going to be able to run it from wherever you are. So if you're using a server that doesn't have TASO installed, you could just go ahead and if it has Git, you can do this, uh, which is very useful. Uh, also, you don't have to be under your applications directory or any sort of installation path you can just do it in wherever uh, just do it somewhere it makes sense to you right now i'm doing it in the desktop because it is easy to to see and show so one of the other things is that with git we can also keep the software up to date very easily and uh, for that what we do i'm gonna clear so we have start from scratch so I'm going to change directory into that new directory that has been created. I'm going to show you my desktop. And you can see here it's TASO5 standalone. So using the command line, we're going to go into that directory. So change directory and then TASO5 standalone. Uh, and again, we can do this thing called git pull. And that means that it's going to go into uh, the online directory uh, the residence of the code and it's going to ask if there is anything new uh, and exciting and if there is nothing well uh, it's going to tell you it's already up to date but if you haven't done it in a couple of weeks or months and there is something different then it's going to update to the latest and greatest version of the software you're using for git so now uh, the first thing i'm going to show you is how to again start from something clear how to uh, start the user interface using this uh, standalone so if you are using a server you may not be able to do this but if you're using your own personal computer you can just type point slash start tassel.pl and then here it's very easy to allocate uh, memory so you can say uh, six gigabytes of memory uh, directly and then it's gonna call in tassel and it shows you tassel so we are currently in version 5.2.16 and you can see that it's very easy you can do everything you have done before 
in the uh, user interface uh, and you just launched it from the uh, terminal. So there's a couple of other things that you can do that are also very interesting. So uh, here it tells you the version, the uh, available, the number of processors I have in my computer, and I allocated memory here by saying 6G. So we can start the same command and we can start doing some interesting things. For example, I can say uh, dash import guess and that's gonna guess what thing I'm gonna give it. So what, by default when you download this it's gonna have some tutorial data. So we can go ahead and uh, ask what tutorial data is. So I think it's under task of tutorial data and then data and then you can see that there is several things there. And then we can do mdp slash genotype.hmp.dxt so that's going to load the hapmap file and then we can do a simple filter slash filter so filter alignment and then we can filter by a little frequency which is a simple thing that often you want to do when you want to do for example GWAS so filter uh, line mine frequency then let's say five percent now what this is gonna do it's gonna do this all in one go so it loaded the genotype uh, and then it did what I told it to do which is filter by a little frequency and it created this new genotype table which has that characteristic so that's really useful and very handy uh, and again you can go back and you have this piece of code that tells you exactly what you did and the filtering so you can also save it and it makes for much more reproducible stuff. Um, so another thing is, you may, uh, one of the things that about using the command line interface is that it's more powerful. You have a lot of uh, more plugins available and a lot more customization. So one of the ways to know what are what is in there is to uh, do the run pipeline.pl. This is what you're gonna use if you don't want to launch the user interface after some sort of commands. I'm gonna give some examples in future videos. Uh, but if you just wanna run the command line and use command line only, for example, if you're in a server or if you really don't care for, for seeing the output, then you're gonna use run pipeline.pl. And then we can do dash list plugins and you can see that it tells you all the things that are in Tasso available. Uh, and there's a lot, there's a lot of things that are out there. And uh, at the beginning of it, you can see that it has two parameters, full and usage. So we can turn each of them as true, just so you see what it does. So dash full, let's do true. Uh, and you can see that it gives you the entire path of where it, where it is. So uh, the other thing you can do is just print usage. And this is going to give you like a lot of information. Uh, uh, so this is how you use it for all the uh, plugins that are already annotated. So if you want to see it slowly, as more, more likely you want, you can just use a pipe and say less. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna stop the output in this command, and then by using the arrows in your keyboard, you can slowly go into whatever you want to do, whatever uh, plugin you're interested in. For example, if we want to use uh, the fixed effect uh, plugin, which I'm gonna show in a very uh, in one of the future videos, uh, then you know, okay, this is what it does. I can take these different parameters and uh, there's others like genomic selection and you can slowly scroll through and uh, they're annotated and tells you some of the parameters. So with Q we leave that screen 
Um, that's it for now. Uh, the next video is going to be a little bit more uh, an actual example of how I use the command line for a simple fixed effect GWAS. And then I'm going to be doing uh, some videos with the user interface and also the command line so that we understand what is happening and some basic filtering and GWAS. So thanks for watching and uh, if you have any comments, feel free to email me.